啊。It's star. That's fine. 下面听得见吗？听不清。声音有点小。Can you, can you turn on this one too? Turn on this mic. Can I use this mic? Hello. Hello. I think this better. Hello. Okay. Uh, so, uh, my name is Yan Wang. I'm from SUNY Binghamton. Uh, today, I'm very honored to hold the last topic review session about in body communication. So, in body communications. The generalized conception, uh, concept of the in-body communication, I think, is the communication technologies that can allow data transmission from the transmitter in or on the human body to the re receiver, which is also in or on the body, or more ideally to a receiver that is close but off the human body. So imagine if you have such technology that can support a certain data rate what can you do? So look at our current applications. You can actually use them to replace some widely deployed wireless technologies, such as Bluetooth, Zigbee, and Wi-Fi, when transmitter and tra receiver are both in or close to the human body. This technology could provide even lower consumption and support many other applications in either personal area network or body area networks. So the personal area network, where the network of devices are usually within a range of around 10 meters from the human body, the devices carried by the user can communicate with each other through human body instead of using the electromagnetic field-based radio frequency signals. Moreover, the applications in the body, uh, body area network, where the network of devices are op operated um, or uh, in or attached to the human body, can also benefit from the in-body communication technology. The body area network technology envisions that those devices, those miniature sensors and the devices could be worn or implanted on the body continuously monitoring health parameters and acting to prevent onset of the critical health uh, events. For example, diabetics now have the access to an automatic insulin pump that monitors glucose uh, levels and also administers in insulin when the glucose levels are high. Similar technologies will, own, uh, will all one day result in devices which can minimize the heart, rate, uh, heart attacks or stroke. So they could prevent frequent hospital visits and save costs for both the individual patient and the national healthcare system. And these applications can only be enabled when the in-body communication uh, is, is good enough. So which is why the in-body communication is still a hot topic today. So if you have noticed that I use the word steel, you probably will ask why. Actually, this in-body communication uh, concept has been raised by Dr. Zimmerman uh, in 1995. So he first, he's the first one brought the idea about personal area network in his thesis. In the same thesis, he also proposed that in-body communications for the first time. Dr. Zimmerman demonstrated how mobile devices near the human body can exchange digital information by capacitive uh, coupling and in pico ampere current through the human body. And he said the near field communication can operate at very low frequencies and low transmission power. In addition to that, he also built a prototype of the personal area network transmitter that operates at 330 kilohertz at 13 volts with a transmission power consumption of 1.5 milliwatts. 
So the basic idea of in-body communications is a technique that uses human body as a channel to transmit electrical signals. In-body communications is based on the near-field coupling mechanism, in which the majority of the signal is confined through the surface of body, thereby least energy being radiated into the air. While in the case of different RF standards, such as Bluetooth and Zigbee, electromagnetic energy get radiated in the environment causes more power consumption. So the in-body communications actually uh, is becoming widely uh, adopted. So uh, this in-body communications application area is very wide. It can be used for communication between mobile terminals as well as for communication between a mobile terminal and a terminal embedded in the environments also can be applied to two terminals that are both embedded in the environments. So the typical advantage of the in-body communications are as follows. First, the cables are actually eliminated. So we, if you notice that the, the in-body communication for the transmitter and receiver need to be both or either one of them are on the human body. And the electrical signal actually is conducted through the human body, so there's no cable. Second, the communication can easily be started or terminated at when, uh, whenever the owner or user actually wants to stop it. So it's very secure if, uh, compared to those uh, wireless signals uh, that can, could possibly be um, eavesdropped by the adversary. And third, it is more secure that ordinary uh, that ordinary wireless communication, because data signals are not radiated outward as it's continued to the body. So the comparison of in-body communications and other wireless, communica uh, wireless communication technologies are shown uh, in the table. This is, um, in, in the table you can see that the, to serve as a suitable communication technology for body area network, the in-body communications has been attempting to become a prospective candidate due to its low interference, high security, and the suitable transmission range, and also potentially high degree of miniaturization. So in the table, you can see, you can find that the Bluetooth Zigbee and ANT and also Sensium technologies, they are using the uh, frequencies uh, ranging from nine to, uh, nine, 90, 902 megahertz and 928 megahertz, or 2.4 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. So within that frequency band, actually there are a lot of interferences. However, why do we not to use this, the wireless technology for the in-body communications? Simply because these wireless signals actually have a very high um, attenuation by the human body when it goes through the human tissues. So that's why more uh, we need to study this problem, how to uh, build this in-body communications. So there are many researchers actually devoted their efforts and thoughts to investigate the muscles and their electrical properties. So that, that's actually the foundation of uh, the in-body communications. So generally, there are two forms of uh, bioelectrical uh, assessments of muscle. One is to investigate the electrical signal originating from the muscle. And the other one is actually you can apply the electricity signal and, uh, to examine the mus uh, muscle movements. So the relationship between the electricity and the muscle contraction was first observed by the Italian physician Luigi um, Gavanic in the mid-1780s. So he performed the experiment of uh, connecting the nerves of the recently dead frog to a long metal wire and pointing it toward the sky during a thunderstorm. So the flash of the light actually triggered this uh, uh, frog legs and the, tw the frog legs tweeted and jumped as if they were alive. So Galvanic uh, pointed out that the, the, this recent dead muscle tissues can still be, respons be responsive to external uh, electrical stimulation. 
Uh, since then, more and more researchers are actually starting looking into that and study how this electrical signal um, and what's the relationship between the electric current and the tissue impedance and the dielectric properties. So the research in the electrical properties of the human tissues has built a solid foundation for the in-body communications. Based on the knowledge of the electrical properties, two main principles of uh, uh, in-body body, in -body communications have been widely investigated to accomplish in-body communications. So which include those capacitive uh, coupling and uh, galvanic coupling. And along this te these both technologies, transmitting signal, coupling uh, electron nodes and the receiving e electron nodes are required to perform the in-body uh, communications. However, the direct electro uh, skin contact is necessary to achieve the galvanic complaint, which is the opposite set in, in, in the case of uh, capacitive coupling. So you can see that uh, the human, uh, sorry. So you can see that the human uh, body actually is used as the capacitive uh, coupled to the surrounding area in the capacitive coupling. And the ground, uh, ground uh, both the air or the environment or the ground is used as the, in the loop of the circuit. And uh, in the galvanic uh, coupling, uh, the performance uh, uh, this um, circuit is actually performed by coupling uh, by inserting the uh, alternative uh, current into the human body. And uh, then the, the receiver will examine the reflect, uh, reflecting the signal that transmits through the human body. Okay. So in 1995, uh, Dr. Zimmerman uh, not just uh, do the research to perform the, um, actually do the, not just uh, design this uh, personal area network for in vain. And he actually did the research to perform the precision measurement of a yo-yo mass cello bowl. So he discovered that the place, uh, by placing one's hand in the, in the electric field, that actually that will attenuate the received signal strength significantly. So since then, uh, Dr. Zimmerman also developed a prototype, and uh, as I said, that he uh, proposed that, that uh, in-body communications based on the prototype. So uh, what happened? So the capacitive coupling uh, in in-body uh, communications, also called the near-field coupling and the electrostatic coupling are described in the principal figure. The signal electrode nodes, uh, both transmitter and the receiver, are attached on the human skin, while the ground electrode nodes are floating in the air. So a large electric field, uh, which is the ET in the figure, is introduced to the human body by the signal electrode node of the transmitter. The conductivity of the human body not only coupled electrical field to the environment, but also serves as a conducting plate that induces uh, electrical fields to other conducting plates. So the electrical fields in the environment or through, uh, through the external earth ground serves as the ground return pass. At the receiver, the received signal as electric potential uh, difference between ER and the ET, EF and ED is allowed to be detected as the ER is much larger than the EF and the ED. So that's the signal that you can use to determine uh, the, uh, the receive the signal. So on the other hand, this uh, electrical potential differences is quite small due to the escape of the electric field, uh, as shown in the last figure. And furthermore, the detected signal is unstable and highly influenced by the in, uh, environment on accounting that the electric field, uh, along with the environment changes, such as the ap appearance of the metallic uh, furniture, wires, water, and the office uh, equipment will change the backward capacitance. So to avoid the human body's atten uh, antenna effect of the radiant signal, 
The operating frequency of this capacitive coupling should also be lower than 150 megahertz. And most of the electrical field will concentrate around the tip of the arm and wearing the transmitter. And the capacitive coupling in body communications is suitable for the, those applications requiring higher operations uh, frequency for approximating of uh, tens of megahertz. And also, it's suitable for the longer body transmission distance, usually along the whole, whole body. And uh, nevertheless, capacitive coupling in body communication is vulnerable to the external interferences and other unpredicted uh, effects, such as subjects of body movements. So the galvanic uh, cu coupling in body communications was first reported in 1997 by the Japanese researchers Hada. The in-body communication signal from the chest was modulated into microampere electrical current coupled into the human body by electrical nodes and detected by a pair of receiving electrical nodes on the wrist. So the transmitting and the receiving electrical nodes were in direct contact with the body. That's the difference between the previous mentioned capacitive mod, uh, coupling. And the system worked with the small power consumption, only eight microwatts. The results suggest that the data transmission with low transmission power is possible by using galvanic coupling. And the galvanic coupling in body communications also termed the waveguide in body communications, which utilizes the I ionic fluid in, in body and the volume and conduction uh, properties of tissues to convey these electrical signals. So that's the, the human body actually is full of the ionic fluids, so which that's the reason it can, can guide the uh, electrical signal that are passing through the body. So the simplified model is deprecated in this figure uh, that a major, I, ionic current is generated within the tissue to close to the transmitter, and with a separated distance to the transmitter, the current will decrease due to the impedance of the human, human tissue. So the small current induces the electric po potential that can be detected at the receiver by a higher gain difference amplifier. So this is the principle how the galvanic coupling can work. So, in 1998, after we dis, uh, the Japanese researcher discovered that the, the galvanic coupling can actually use the two, uh, for in-body communications, Lindsay and uh, his um, uh, group mates tested the, uh, the galvanic coupling in body communications between an implantable uh, device and an external data acquisition system. So this time, the transmitter actually is implanted into the human bones, with the, the transmitter uh, contains two platinum electron nodes, each is 0.838 millimeters in diameter and separated by 2.4 millimeters. And they use the signal with a frequency of 2 to 160 kilohertz and the amplitudes of 1 to 3 milliampes into the leg of the human cadaver. So they found that the, the electron microgram, uh, which in short is EMG, electron nodes on the surface of the leg, where they uh, actually can be measured, and that the human body channel resulting in attenuation within three, uh, 37 to uh, 48 dB. So this prototype also demonstrates that it is feasible to utilize galvanic coupling in body-human communications. So more about the galvanic coupling. Uh, in 1998, actually, uh, sorry, uh, more about the, uh, about the, the galvanic coupling, that we, if we compare to the capacitive uh, uh, coupling in body communications, that galvanic coupling in body communications operates in lower frequency and is less influenced by the environment simply because two tra uh, both transmitters and receivers are attached to the human body. So the 
entire loop actually is in the human body. So therefore, the galvanic coupling in body communications is more suitable for the vital physiology signal transmission, especially for the implanted device components, uh, communications. And certainly, it also trades off data rate. Fortunately, the, the data rate requirement for the vital physiological, uh, physiological signal transmission are relate, relatively low. For example, 75 kilo BPS is enough for the, for the heart measurements, like the ECG. And also 1.6 kilo BPS is good enough to transmit the blood oxygen level, like the SpO2. And also for both the pacemaker and the implanted glucose sensors, they only need about less than 100 kilo BPS. So therefore, this galvanic coupling in body communications is also a promising candidate for the vital physiological data transmission among wearables and the implanted devices. So if you look at the uh, communication model of this uh, in-body communications, it's quite similar as our typical communication models. Right? We use cap uh, capacitive or either capacitive or galvanic uh, coupling to build the transmitter and the receiver around the human body and use the human body as the channel. So to better serve the per its communication purpose, in, uh, in addition to the study of how to build the transmitter and the receiver, we also need to learn the channel, right? So there are more research work actually focusing on the channel property and, and study the model of the channel properties and the signal propagations in the human body. So the study of the signal propagating mo uh, model are generally based on the electrical properties of human issues and tissues. So the frequency dispersion mechanism of human tissue was first introduced by Schwann, and, and the three main dispersion regions is denoted by the alpha, beta, and uh, gamma. At the respective frequency of low frequency range, RF frequency range and uh, gigahertz frequency range. So as shown on the figure. So the alpha dispersion, which is on the left side of the uh, figure, it's, it's, it is well known that uh, related to the polarization of the counter rear atmosphere near charged surfaces in the tissue, or the polarization of the large member, member brain uh, bound structure in the tissue. Or it is also as associated with the ionic diffusion process at the site of the cellular, cellular membrane. It is apparent in primitive and hardly noticeable in the conductivity. So you can see that the con conductivity at, in the gamma dispersion is quite low. And the beta dispersion basically is uh, between the frequency range uh, of uh, 0.1 to 100, uh, sorry, 1. Uh, 10 megahertz, which is the relaxation effects are caused by the proteins, uh, less extended uh, amino acid residues, and the bile impedance uh, of the uh, organic inside in, in, the, in the cell, and the cell nuclei and uh, metochin. As the cell membrane have negligible impedance, charge of the cell membranes through intracellular and extracellular actually become easier. So you can see the uh, conductivity actually becomes higher. So the impedance actually is become lower and lower. And the gamma di uh, dispersion, which uh, is above one gigahertz, it shows high conductivity region. It's mainly caused by a variety of tissues and the pro protein solutions. So uh, all those uh, channel uh, properties is going, oh, sorry. All those channel properties is, is actually going to, uh, based on this assumption. So um, there's a thing, based on this uh, channel uh, understanding, there are simplified uh, galvanic coupling uh, in-body communication equivalent circuit model developed by the Weck uh, Muller. So he assumed that the, there were six body tissue impedance and four electronodes scheme impedance 
for low frequency, which is less than one megahertz. And uh, the simplified circuit model is shown in this figure. And the model takes into account the impedance of human limb, such as the longitudinal and the cross-channel impedance, as well as electronal uh, skin impedance and also the output impedance. So besides this uh, simple, simplified circuit model, uh, Dr. Wegman Miller also described the body impedance by equivalent parallel circuit of uh, resistance and uh, capacitance according to the COCO reference model. And then a more complex layered tissue like the skin, uh, muscle, and bones model was de uh, developed. So each layer tissue was composed by transversal and uh, longitudinal uh, impedance with this COCO circuit model and connected to the flash. So uh, it, overall, it will cascade in, uh, in parallel and uh, as shown in, the, in this figure. So the circular model of skin for both capacitive coupling uh, in body communication was also developed, uh, is, was developed by the Amro uh, Callaghan uh, in uh, 2004. So in this model, the equivalent circular model of skin can be seen as a glossy, a glossy transmission line without the inductive uh, element. And for capacitive coupling method, the model parameter which is the propagation constant and the characteristic uh, impedance, also depends on the capacitance uh, effect of, from the external ground return path. So that's why it's more uh, in, vulnerable to the environment change. It was reported that the attenuation increased up to 200 kilohertz and remains uh, approximately constant for higher frequencies in galvanic coupling. And for capacitive coupling, uh, a bandwidth profile was observed within one and the 100, between 100 and 100 megahertz. So now let's look at a few of the, sorry. Now let's look at a few of uh, the um, research model, model methods to um, describe the channel using the galvanic coupling. So Kibrit proposed a pro model for galvanic coupling um, and based on the, the simplified equi uh, equivalent circuit that we just seen uh, on the human upper arm. So they proposed a new way to calculate the electrical skin contact impedance based on the model and human experimental uh, ex results. So they discovered that the gain was found to rise slowly as frequency increased from 200 kilohertz to 10 megahertz, and the phase actually fell from 50, and 50 degree to 10 degrees as frequency decreases. And the Fuji um, and, and it's, uh, his group uh, utilized the FDTD method, which is the short for the finite difference time domain, um, this technique is a numerical analysis technique used for modeling the computational electrodynamics. And uh, they found that it was actually very, quite good to model this uh, uh, channel for the capacitive uh, uh, coupling. And they, it was found that the most part of the electric uh, field was concentrated around the tip of the arm and the biological uh, tissue equivalent solid and phantom was sufficient to mimic the human body. And the similar results and also has also found before that, uh, after that the dominant signal was on the surface of the arm. And the later, uh, Xu has proposed a circuit coupling using the finite element method, in short, FEM. So this model is based on the, also based on the capacitive coupling and they found that the human body was considered as a circuit of lambda resistor parallel with the lambda capacitor. So it's similar to the previous model, the uh, circular model for the capacitive, uh, for the galvanic coupling. And the channel gain satisfied a high pass pro profile and the return pass capacitance was, in the, uh, was dependent on the transceiver ground and also external ground. And re more recently, 
The Callinger investigated the, the electric field and distribution and the current, de current density used in the FEM. It is found that the electric field is mainly confined to the out, uh, outer layer of the hum, and the radiation will, uh, could be negligent. So the majority of the electric current in the galvanic coupling is traveling through the muscles. So the effect of the channel distance actually um, has been also studied. So Bay has uh, pr proposed a theoretical model for the capacitive coupling, and they found that the, the actually for the effect of the channel distance of 10 centimeter and 40 centimeter and 120 centimeters uh, are uh, are, to are different. So within the low, if you look at the figure on the right hand side, uh, within the lower frequency band uh, that the sorry. Uh, within, within the lower frequency band, uh, actually the signal is going to look like a high pass filter, while with, uh, when the distance becoming longer uh, for the channel, uh, this uh, channel um, property is more like a band pass filter. So this is the major funding of from the bay. So besides the signal propagation, model, and uh, another important issue is that the related to, to the tr data transmission is the channel characteristics, which generally guide us to select the suitable transmission parameters, such as the frequency band and the modulation methods. So in what follows, uh, that uh, the uh, we introduce the channel characteristics. So the channel gain actually behavior has been generally studied as a band pass filter or high pass filter. So for both the capacitive and the uh, galvanic coupling. And the, the researchers found that the influence from the electron nodes actually is very significant. And the, the, if you have uh, put the electron nodes on the human arms, like the human limbs, uh, you get better results. And the transmission uh, ground of the electron nodes actually strengthen, uh, can strengthen the signal in the capacitive coupling. For the large scale uh, body behaviors, uh, such as the walking, sitting, and the standing, uh, researchers found that they have little effect on the channel, uh, channel change uh, in the capacitive coupling and, and the galvanic coupling. The joint behavior, such as the joint flexion or uh, extension can actually cause more change on, the, on both coupling methods, together with the phase change. And the linear channel can have been found in the body movement uh, when there's no body movement in the galvanic coupling. So if you want to use, uh, describe the channel in a linear mode, you, you should use the galvanic coupling. And for both all these studies, uh, white, uh, Gaussian white, white uh, average white uh, noise has been assumed for both uh, galvanic coupling and uh, um, capacitive coupling study. So uh, if you look at the communication performance, I don't know if you can see them clearly. Uh, this, uh, this table actually compared uh, uh, research work that uh, examined the performance of the in body different in, in body communication that implementation uh, to uh, from from two, uh, 1995 to 2013 so you can see that uh, actually for the galvanic coupling in the recent research actually uh, it can support up to 2 mega bps as we said uh, the uh, capacitive, capacitive coupling actually can support an even higher uh, throughput, which, up, which is up to 10 megabps, by using different uh, modulation method and also different uh, within the closed transmission distance. So, uh, whenever any form of energy is introduced. Uh, human body, uh, actually uh, we won't need to be sure that this uh, energy into the human body is safe for the human. 
So there are also guidelines and also uh, uh, standards have been developed to make sure the in-body communication is safe for the human body. So the applied electrical current or voltage on human body must follow the IEEE standard C95.1 in 2005. And also, uh, there's an international commission on non-ionizing uh, uh, radiation protection guideline has been developed to especially regulate uh, this um, voltage that is, should go through the human body. Okay, so uh, when if you are conducting any research in uh, in-body communications, uh, you need to be really careful about these. So the application of uh, the in-body communications actually, like I said, is quite widely. So uh, if you look at the uh, recent work, and there's a uh, Hada, the, the Japanese uh, researcher who found the capacitive coupling technique. Has found actually they found a lower power uh, build a lower power uh, consumption wireless system for monitoring the ECG signal, and they found this uh, technology is good enough to transmit the ECG signal and also the uh, from the uh, transmit the ECG signal from the chest to the human limb and uh, further use the wireless technology to transmit it to the receiver. And another application is that you can use the in-body human communication to transmit the heart rate and uh, the SpO2, which is the blood oxygen level. Um, in this work, they introduced a, 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 they built a, pro, uh, um, a human arm phantom, and also they used this to uh, reduce uh, the uncertainty in experiments with the human body. So the phantom exhibits transmission characteristics similar to those of the human body at frequency between 1 megahertz and 10 megahertz. And in their study, they found they are using 10.7 megahertz frequency modulation. And also, they achieved at 9,600 9, BPS using the FSK. So uh, more, uh, act, uh, it, more applications have been done actually using this uh, galvanic coupling to aid diagnose and uh, treat, treatment of the fluid disorders by monitoring the uh, quantitative uh, hydration and the dehydration rate affected by the physical, uh, physiological state and the metabolic uh, equivalent uh, monitored by the in-body communication technology. So uh, as I mentioned, that the large human body movements actually doesn't impact the capacitive uh, coupling very much. However, the joint uh, movement actually changed the capacitance uh, a lot. So you actually can also utilize te this technology to measure the joint angle, uh, uh, to estimate the joint angle, which have also been done uh, lately. So. Uh, As a conclusion, actually, we have uh, uh, two major in-body communication methods. Um, we show that the, the in-body communication is a short range and a non rf and wireless communication technology using the human body as a transmission medium. And also, there are two major approaches using either capacitive uh, coupling or the galvanic coupling. And both of them require uh, the electrical nodes to, to be attached to the human body. But the capacitive uh, coupling actually uh, can achieve higher uh, data rates because it can run uh, using the higher frequency bandwidth. And also, uh, but it's also sensitive to the environment change and uh, uh, other uh, impact factor like the human body movement. And the galvanic coupling is uh, having a relatively lower frequency band, but it's more uh, robust and uh, most likely can be utilized to transmit the biological information from the human body to the receiver. And uh, also, the channel gain behaviors are most likely uh, to be the band pass or the high pass filter in different frequency band, also the length of the human body that you are involved in the human communication. So uh, actually, when, when I look at those uh, in-body communications, there are other technologies 
uh, instead of using the uh, wireless uh, electrical signals. Um, so one of the interesting work that I found is that um, the intrabody communications can also be achieved using the ultrasonic sound, uh, which has been proposed uh, uh, in 2012. And also there's uh, a nanotechnology proposed to uh, build those uh, nanomachines and uh, nanotubes that can be implanted to the human body and also uh, resonate with uh, certain electrical signals um, uh, to achieve uh, in-body communications. So there, uh, these are two interesting properties that we, we should have. So, uh, so I, uh, as I mentioned that uh, in our Mobicom, uh, there's uh, uh, relate, most related work in the in-body communications is that uh, we, uh, we have the paper from Marco Grutus's group is uh, the body guided communications a low power, highly uh, confined uh, primitive to track and uh, secure every touch. So it was, uh, although it was, has been pr presented yesterday, that we actually found uh, this um, work is very interesting that they, they developed uh, uh, a very interesting design that using the combination of the galvanic coupling and the transmitter side and uh, do uh, double capacitive coupling and a touch receiver so uh, they actually, this uh, design improved the receive the signal and the intended receiver while uh, reducing it and, uh, at an attack monitoring the channel on the air. So um, uh, thank you for attending the session. I think we uh, have uh, uh, a very uh, thorough understanding of the uh, previous uh, development on the in-body communication technologies and uh, hopefully we will see more um, papers about this in, in this topic and uh, more technology in addition to the dynamic galvanic uh, coupling and also capacitive coupling. Thank you. So if you have um, want to get more information, you can go and talk to uh, Dr. Yan Wang. Um, so the next session will start right away. Um, ben will Ben. Um, he's the session chair, and I saw he's coming up. And all the speakers, please coming up to uh, please come up to uh, test out your slides. Thank you. Let's see. Can I try to see? Can I show you something? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. 